was cold. What had started out as a mild winter had turned into the wrath of the north, with wind chill temperatures ranging from 20 to 40 degrees below zero. I began to believe that whatever drives a man to wait in a tree stand for the unpromised and unlikely shot at a wild Russian boar in this kind of weather could easily be tempered in exchange for fishing in the Florida sun for the rest of his days. Teddy Taylor and I started off on a week-long hunt for the wild and dangerous Russian boar. But the day before we were ready to go, it hit. An Arctic blast that paralyzed the entire country from Oshkosh to Houston and from San Francisco to Charlotte. In spite of the weather, we tucked our tails between our legs and headed for the frozen brushlands with a handful of fiberglass and a few pointed sticks to hunt a beast that can live up to 30 years, eats raw meat when it has to, and can find a man in total darkness. back on a whitetail hunt with Noel Feather and former Major League pitcher Jim Kern. We hit it off right away and swore at that first meeting that someday we would take a wild Russian boar hunting trip together. Promises are made between hunters with the frequency of a ham radio, but this particular someday was destined to happen. My name is Shane Jones. Hunting has been a way of life for me since my father taught me to hunt almost 20 years ago. Now for those hunters who've never had the challenge of stalking a wild boar with a bow and arrow, I advise them to proceed with extreme caution, but above all, I advise them to proceed. That first morning, Teddy and I spent scouting out the 10,000 acres where we had heard that the Russians were as thick as fleas on a long-haired dog in August. Now that may be true in August, but this was the beginning of February, the roughest part of winter, and our chances for finding these animals were dropping as fast as the temperature. Now, 10,000 acres may be a lot of ground to cover, so you need to give yourself an edge. Besides being physically fit, a good pair of binoculars, some good warm clothes, plenty of information on geography, migration patterns, habitat, and present food supply will give you all the edge you need. birth, the pure Russian boar can weigh up to two pounds and expect an average lifespan of about eight years. Hogs in milder climates have been known to live as long as 30 years. In Europe, wild hogs are known to travel in larger groups of several sows and young called sounders. Possible explanations for the lack of these large groups in the United States include the lack of a well-defined rut period, the milder climate, and in rare instances, the loss of social traits due to the interbreeding with feral pigs. Wild hogs have an acute sense of smell and hearing, but their eyesight is poor. They are also largely nocturnal, extremely intelligent, secretive, and capable of moving great distances. After the first day, we had spotted an area where they had been feeding and traveling despite the weather. All things considered, the sightings were met with controlled enthusiasm. Teddy had set himself up in a tree stand in the area we had scouted several days earlier. He settled in for this long wait for a shot that might never come.
Heidi in the tree stand, I had made the decision to attempt to stalk, but the fresh fallen snow would be both an asset and a liability. Any hogs that weren't bedded down would be as easy to spot as a mouse in a sack of flour, but their keen senses would make it difficult to gain any advantage. Stalking is an art form. There are as many opinions on how to do it as there are hunters who try it. Know your terrain and where to look for locators such as wallows, feeding, and bedding areas. Approach a well-traveled path upwind, stopping every few yards, listening, and checking your binoculars is a great place to start. Tail. I'm following this trail. I've been following it for the last three hours. This is the last area we we spotted these animals, and uh, I haven't come across any fresh tracks. We should come across some here. Just a few minutes. Uh, we were last spotted up in this area, moving down this ravine. So we're gonna make a semicircle, cat a quarter, and where we last spotted the animals to try to lock, try to find them. It should be easy tracking in the snow. It's a lot more difficult, as you can tell, than what the eye, than what, uh, than what most people think. So, let's do our best. The rapid spread of the Russian boars in the United States is due in part to its high reproductive potential. Sexual maturity is reached within a year of birth for both sexes, and when the food supply is adequate and the animals are healthy, it can be as early as seven to eight months of age. The gestation period for the Russian boar is not known with certainty, but is estimated at 100 to 125 days. Average litter size is about 4.8, and while there is no distinct rutting season, two farrowing peaks have been detected. December to early February, and April to May. Births do occur year-round, but they are less frequent from August to November. When food is abundant, births can be almost continuous. While I'm trying to sneak up on a prize hog, let's see how Teddy is doing in that tree stand. Notice how he checks his range. Make sure that you do it every time because after you spot the hogs, it's too late. that have emerged from their nest to look for food. After one of the warmest winters on record, this incredible cold snap was unexpected for them as well. Come to Papa.
was a terrific shot by Teddy Taylor from that tree stand. Here's why. If you're going to shoot from a tree stand, practice from a tree stand. What I like to do is place my tree stand 15 to 20 feet up off the ground and place my target 20 to 25 yards distance from me. I like to take several shots from this angle. After you get up in your tree stand, you're going to want to clean all the branches and limbs out of your way. This will give you a better field of view. First thing you want to do after getting up in your tree stand is check your, your movement of range here. Because if the tree, such as this one behind me, is too close to your elbow, you can't really get a good shot at this angle. So you want to position yourself in order to make a good, clean drawback. move this target now 10 yards further back give me some good distance judgment make it about 35 yard shot Remember, if you shoot from a tree stand, practice from a tree stand. While Teddy's waiting on that second board to get out from under the brush, let's take a look at my stock and see how it's going. Here it goes. There you go, see him up top? Okay, he's gonna make a circle. We're gonna try to get him coming down. We backed off in hopes that he would make a circle. And sure enough, 10 minutes later, he was back. Here he comes, hold still. That's the luck. No shot sometimes. We continued to wait in the area, and again, the same boar returned. Okay, he's, he's head right there. See him? Straight right back to there. He's stationary. Okay, here he comes. He's going up the hill. Here he comes down. Okay, hold still.
and again he evades us. Hurry on. Now, one of the most important elements of a stalk is remembering that you're dealing with a vicious animal. Now watch as Tom, our camera assistant, is charged by that very same hog that we've been stalking for the last few hours. It almost goes from a tenor to a soprano in just a couple of seconds. Oh, oh, oh. No arrow, no shot. Let's take a look at that again in slow motion. Notice Tom's improvised technique of getting away from a 300 pound charging boar. We nicknamed this the swing technique. Remember it. It could save your shins and possibly your life. Remember, you are dealing with an animal that is heavily armored. If your shot is off just an inch, you have just changed your status from hunter to hunted. Watch as I get my first opportunity at this guy that has charged us several times. Okay. Get ready, get ready. Incredible. Let's look at it again. Now in this sequence, our cameraman was caught on the leg by one of those razor sharp tusks. Now this boar is extremely intelligent. He lays up for us, and after taking an arrow, comes at us in a full charge. Watch as the cameraman's point of view spins as he's hit. Well, while we try and remain alive long enough to get this wild boar, let's check on Teddy's attempt at the other hog from the tree stand.
Notice that if properly hit, the animal will almost immediately drop or take very few steps before falling over. The cold weather and a properly placed arrow in the vitals will prevent the hogs from running very far. But remain in your tree stand until plenty of time has passed. Take a closer look at the boar's anatomy and shoulder plating, and I'll illustrate its toughness with a tree stand shot that I made later that week. Let's look at it from another angle. Immediately after the first shot, I place another arrow just inches to the left, narrowly missing the shoulder and penetrating the vital organs, dropping the boar in his tracks. the original angle. You'll agree that this should be a good shot. Let's look at it again and take a look at the area that you must avoid. Now look here at the side view of the Russian boar. You have two areas where an arrow will penetrate the hog, either forward or behind the shoulder. Now if you're unlucky enough to hit in between these two spots, the hog won't even know he's been hit. 
that shoulder bone is really tough. While a forward shot will penetrate, a shot behind the bone is preferable. Let's go back and find out how we fared against what we've nicknamed the killer boar from hell. By now, I had had enough, and so had the television guys. This was a dangerous animal. He had charged our cameraman, catching him in the leg and cutting him badly. When the opportunity came again, I took it. Even though our cameraman was lame and beginning to fall behind in the chase. As the hog charged from the left, I hit him with an arrow, and again he headed straight for the camera assistant. I headed up the trail another 20 feet and took my shot. A shot that eluded me for so Get many hours, footage. and it hit home, a spine shot. But he was down within seconds, and a great feeling of relief for me, you can be sure, when this hog was harvested, there was no other feeling like it. It's a, it's a spine shot. I got this hog. This hog we've been chasing for three and a half, four hours. He's taking, he's taking us around this, this whole timber for the last mile, mile and a half, wounded. Uh, I didn't get a good shot. It went through his shoulder and got a little penetration in his vitals, but not much. He, he's come close to me twice. He's a mean one. These things can be dangerous now. You really have to watch yourself with these hogs. Look at the size of the teeth. They're tusk. He's probably got a good three, three and a half inch tusk there. And uh, they're tough. They're tough son of a gun. Doesn't, it takes a lot to bring one of these down. Once you wound one, you've really got to be careful as you notice uh, how he laid up for us, waiting for us to come by. It's almost like uh, instead of us hunting him, he was hunting us. Hey, Ted, any luck? Yeah. You get a shot? Yeah, I got two down over here. Did you really? <laughs> Sometimes I'm so good, it scares me. <laughs> over here in the brush somewhere. You talk, you talk about a double whammy. Yeah. <laughs> they worked their way down to me, and when they did, they didn't know I was anywhere around. You didn't have far to go, did you? No. A whole uh, no, 10 was, feet? When I did, I took him just right here under the tree. Where's the other one at? He's right down here over the hill. How about well, he that? You couldn't have had it better. Oh, he must be oh yeah, he's a good hog. Let's see. Let's see what kind of tusk he's got. I fell down in place where we could got to him. Could he? Look at that. Yeah, he's a good 400 pounds. Could you go in there and drag him out for me? Oh, sure, sure. Appreciate that. <laughs> and while you're at it, you can go down and get this one for me, too. Yeah, you would have to get him out here in the middle of nowhere, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. I'd sure do my best. Oh, he's These are good hogs, good Ted. Job. He's 300 pounds or so. so. Both good shots. He's a good big hog. How old do you figure he is? Oh gosh, I don't know. I'm not much on that. Maybe, maybe About, three, four years old. Yeah. This is a little smaller than that other one. That one That's still a hog. He's probably seven years old or so. This would be some good eating. Though. Just looking where the tusks are worn down. Look at this arrow. The broadhead didn't. Even, it held together real well. It didn't even break up uh -huh. at all. Where's where, the rest where's of it? Yeah, where's the other half? Of I don't it? know. It'll find it. You got good penetration be, on this hog now. Is he further up the tree? Oh, there it is. Right there. Oh yeah. It, uh, yeah, it went all the way through. Uh, I was kind of surprised that it would, because they've got that going point. through that plate. Yeah, yeah. that uh, gristle plate they have that runs back in the here. Uh huh. Excellent shot. Thank you. I'd say it was luck, but I'm, here you go. I'm so to add to your library. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tell you what, if you'll haul this one, I'll haul this one. How about that? I still like the idea about just letting them freeze and come begin in the spring. Oh, here's my arrow. That big trail one. Yeah. Trail right over there. I told you this would be a good spot. All right, all right. You told me. Don't let it go to your head. Okay? <laughs> Don't bloody up. Look at the head. size of this hog. I can't believe it. Yeah, he's good 400 pounds. Looks like he's been fighting. You know. You think we can turn him over? Oh, well, I like sailor's penetration. Well, I got a hole on both sides. Well, maybe. Where's the, uh, where's the hole in it? It's right there. Right here? Uh-huh, right there's the hole. Okay. Well, that's, that's the entrance point. We're on the wrong side. Turn him over again. 
trying to get higher. That's where it came out. It went all the way through. Then we'll find that. There, I'll be back up that way. We follow that trail back up. Okay. Oh, well, I look. see it. There it is. Where it's there. There's, there's the feathers right there. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll get that. Work your way out that way. Russian boar movements, like those of other mammals, are largely a response to meeting their basic requirements for living. Food, shelter, and especially for the hog, the regulation of body temperature with a minimum expenditure of energy. Their migration, home ranges, and daily activities are related to various habitat preferences which best meet these needs at different times of the year. In the spring, from late March through mid-May, they may move upward to the higher elevation ridge lines. Their return to lower elevations takes a shorter period of time, usually beginning around mid-August and finishing by early September. The following day, Teddy was so interested in the challenge of the stalk, we decided to go together to see what we could come up with. Now this is a man who has bow hunted everywhere from the Arctic Circle to South America and always within the guidelines of the local game laws. Let's head down towards this brush pile here and work our way around this hill. Okay. I think, yeah. This time of day they'll be down in the hollow. Thickest part of the brush, don't you think? Oh yeah. The, uh, the pole will keep them down. We need to do this if it wasn't for a snag. If they're even moving at all. Oh, they won't be moving. We'll have to find them and get them out. If we're lucky, what we'll do is we'll, we'll spot them with binoculars and then flush them out. Them. Yeah. Be sure to watch the feet. Yeah. We slip and bust their butt on this side. <laughs> we'll be very, very careful going down there. This ice is really hurting. I saw a guy one time what fell and busted his leg and nobody found him for two days. I won't be anywhere I can get to you. You, I, you, know, you, I can't, you can't get to me if we hurt ourselves. Nope. This isn't the kind of weather to be dragging you out either. No, I don't want to carry you anywhere. I'll tell you what, this is a good area to glass. But, uh... If you see anything, let me know. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to be holed up this time. I use my binoculars, they're frozen my lips. Huh? <laughs> Why would I have my binoculars on my lips? I'll tell you, it looks like there's some pretty good used trails down and through there along this ravine and that deep, that thick stuff. I think we ought to just kind of walk around, I would. circle it. I, I'd keep these. Keep these a wind direction in her face, of course. Wind direction on you, but watch these brush piles because they're going to snuggle up in there. Yeah. And they'll, they'll be bunched together. To Should be one. three or four of them. Just like you would. You know, they're, a, they're a cohabitational animal. They're going to stay together and they're sure. going to keep warm. So I heard can, some fighting earlier. Well, I was going to say, if, we, if you know, we get lucky, you know, somebody will want a spot and then we can, they'll get in a fight over it. Yeah. We'll be able to pick them up. Uh, I didn't hear anything this morning. What did you say you saw? I heard them. I just heard them. I just heard them down the ravine. Just on the trailer, I, yeah. did, you didn't pick up any direction? No, uh, I didn't get any, I didn't even see them. Well, but, uh, uh, your, uh, your stalking techniques today will change from a nice day. Oh, yeah. This, is very, this weather has this, a lot to do with it. The snow and the ice is very, very noisy. And you're going to have to be, and there's no wind in the trees, so there's nothing going to cover you up. If we do it at all, which is not likely, uh, it will be very lucky. Yeah. The one good thing about it, though, is the tracking will be a lot easier. If we can be simple, a lot simpler to read. Yeah. If we simply because of the snow. Yeah. And if we do tag one, at least we'll be able to read it in the snow. Yeah. But what I, I think we should do is uh, use use a, a walking uh, stop technique. Okay. Uh, move very slow. Uh, take one step and stop. Fire. Sure. And uh, we'll listen and see if we can. If they hear us, maybe they'll give a little warning. We can hear them and yeah. slip up on them. We'll be able to hear them running through this brush. You know, if they run, all this yeah. frozen ice. And <coughs> I'm not expecting them to run. Even if they hear us, they might hold. Yeah. Because they might think that we're how many intelligent things are out on a day like this. <laughs> only us only, two. Only human beings are out on a day like this. Everything else is cut up. Okay. Uh, well, what's, why don't we uh, all head up, and make a circle around here? Well, okay, why don't you do that? And, and then, I'll work my way back around on the other side. That way, when you stumble and fall down over one, you can run ahead.
fighting along the ridge line. On a stalk, everything goes out the window when you hear them fighting. Here, you have the optimum advantage. The animals are concentrating on each other, not on you. Race like the wind to get there before it stops. Then, plant yourself and get ready for some real excitement. line, the fighting hogs had begun to wind down a bit, and Teddy was faced with the very thing that we were hoping wouldn't happen, a head-on charge during a territorial skirmish. Another look at the charge in slow motion. Taking a look at Teddy's reaction in close-up. As Teddy made a desperate shot on the charging hog, the other, bigger hog, headed straight for me. Stopped, looked me in the eyes, and started to move off. As he did, I figured that it was now or never. These hogs had made everybody nervous. Listen to the shouts of relief from the camera guys as I take this guy out with one shot. Let's look at it from another angle. Thank you. 
I know it. What a shot. I didn't think he'd come after us, but he did. I thought he was going to eat your lunch. <laughs> How far was he when you shot him? About eight feet. That's the... He came right at me. I thought he was going to Oh, good shot. What were you aiming for? Well, I was aiming between his eyes, but I hit a little bit to the left. Oh, that's <laughs> half inch lava, yeah, one shot he, Teddy. He moved. <laughs> that's uh, a good hog. Yeah, pretty good test. Uh, I tell you, that other one, I thought he was coming after me. That's why I plugged him. <laughs> well, I don't blame you. When they were fighting like that, I really wouldn't expect them to break and come at us. I guess they was all, yeah. all excited. I guess from fighting with each other, yeah. they're mad at the world anyway. No, I'm excited. I tell you. That's a good shot, though. Yeah, it's a good-looking hog. Yeah, he got nice bristles. Black. He's uh, kind of a classic hog. Yeah. As you would say. He's uh, oh, boy, I tell you, that must have gone right down into his heart yeah, and lungs and I, stuff, I just, you know? I just missed that uh, shoulder blade there. Yeah. Great shot. Thank you. Put it there. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah, you a good shot, too. <laughs> Thanks. They broke it. What a, way, what a way to end the hunt, you know? <laughs> I'll tell you. Oh, this is the way to end the hunt. Yeah. <laughs> well, we still got a ways to go. I'm tired from dragging these hogs all over this <laughs> what was it? What was you said? Come on, let's go hog hunting. Yeah, we'll yeah. have a few laughs. I'll tell you what. The word got out. Yeah, I guess so. The guys with pointy sticks was in the woods. That deserves another handshake. I can't <laughs> believe it. I tell you, that's great. You. What a way to end it. All right, well, what do you say we get after it? Well, okay. See, I know he, I hit him up here, and I think he slid or he crawled into some of this brush here. Well, I hope you know where he is. I, I didn't have time to look through where he went. There he is. Yeah, he's down. I'm just glad we decided to hunt together this afternoon. Yeah. Because we never seen these hogs. Oh, I know it. This is an unusual experience. Oh, sure. Uh -huh. One shot Teddy. <laughs> oh, oh you, you got nice tusk here. Slick. Look at that. Nice, nice hog. No, nice, huh? Oh, yeah. No, no. Uh -uh. Where's your, where's your A rogue head? I don't know. He must have broke it off. Up the hill. I've got a good lung shot. I know it took out both lungs. Yeah. Well, <coughs> he's big here. Yeah, he's bigger, man. Oh, of course. Well, I'll let you have that one. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you had to save your life on that other one. <laughs> yeah, right. So he picked me, I think, <laughs> rather than me picking him. Yeah. He's got a good head on him. Good head on him. Let's uh, I think I'd like to mount him. That'll make some good sausage. We'd have missed him if they hadn't been fighting. I know because it. Because I would never come over the top of that hill arbitrarily. No, me neither. Uh, if they had been it's purely coincidental. I know it. We really lucked into this deal. Oh yeah. I could. You could hear him. Well, You'd probably hear him for than, a mile. We'd be lucky than good anyway. That's right. <laughs> When all is said and done, there is always the conversation back at camp over a hot bowl of venison chili, some buffalo sausage, and a cup of hot coffee. And believe me, the wind that was blowing around that table was a lot worse than any that might be encountered from the chili. He done, he done, he done pissed us off. He oh, ran right. a circle around that brush where we were looking for him. Yeah. We were afraid he was going to be in that brush. Yeah, that one guy. I thought he was, remember, because he went in there. And I said, boy, get ready. We're going to have some excitement now. We've had three calls for people trying to get him to do Madam Butterfly. <laughs> Our last day of boar hunting, we were as tired from hauling the boars out of the dense brush as we were from hiking the vast landscape. Nice and warm. Oh yeah. At least we don't have to sleep out here. We still got a, another nice can't you, little... Can't you go across that? Uh, mm -hmm. Look who's talking, huh? You. <laughs> <laughs> the entire day had netted us nothing. But we were beyond caring because at back at camp, really nearly five miles away, we had winched up six hogs that had weighed out at over 2,000 pounds, an average of almost 325 pounds per hog. As the end of the day drew near, we stopped briefly to regain our game plan. Or later on this afternoon or something. Okay. We can, uh, we might have to look at it. You seem to got attacked yesterday. Maybe we'll get attacked again. Was this beautiful or what? Yeah, this is why I've been for 25 years, I guess. It's gorgeous up here. Well, we ought to get a game plan together then. We can run a ridge 
you know, you, hey, you halfway up, and I'll run the bottom or something. Maybe we can kick something up. Okay. It'll be a moving shot. It'll be more difficult, but... We're getting used to that now. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we'll just make plans for uh, tomorrow's hunt. Different yeah. location. It's getting kind of late now. It's probably... Uh, 3.30 now, we've only got about an hour and a half, four, well, hour and a half, two hours of daylight. Yeah. Plus the hike back. So, uh, let's just get a fresh start on it in the morning. Okay. We'll have a little fresher snow to work with, more tracks, easier to follow. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna snow again. Okay, great. Well, this, I tell you what, I bet you in the summertime that's gorgeous. It's beautiful right now. <laughs> Wish it was now. Cold's not so bad. Okay. We had decided to call it a day and make the long hike back to camp. What's the matter, you afraid of the mountains? Uh, you know. Well, lead, follow, or get the hell out of the way. Okay, big I never seen anybody walk like an old woman. It's not like we haven't been going through here for five miles. Okay. Whoa. Whoa, you all right? Fucking you okay? <laughs> See what I tell you? In a hurry as usual. <laughs> hey, when I look for hogs, I don't mess around. Yeah. <laughs> Why carry a big bug? <laughs> I think we're gonna leave that in. Hey man, I'm gonna mess up my twenty dollar hooter. Uh huh. I think we'll leave that one in. But as we were heading through the hills, we heard the sounds of another encounter a long way away. We stopped to see if we could spot anything. We couldn't see anything, but decided to head in the direction of the squills. We continued on, heading for the edge of the brush when I spotted him. A huge hog had furrowed out a fresh nest for himself. No, 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 there they go, there they go. There they go, over the hill. No, wait a minute. There's, a, there's one still right there. Where? Hang on. He's right down at the bottom. It's a big ball. Oh, he's looking right at us. No, hold still. What's the matter? Looks like something, I don't know. He's a, either a mean, he's either hurt or he's a mean son of a gun. Wait for us to get. Yeah, oh, 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 oh. Here he is, right here. Watch him, he's in that brush. He'll come out of there. Going to, he's not moving a muscle. We had made the decision to take him. The only reason that we could figure that this hog was not running or charging was the possibility of his being injured. Watch as the arrow penetrates before the animal has a chance to decide his course of action. Good long shot. Got half his heart. out now. Oh yeah, he's out. He's not breathing. <sighs> Tell you what, I would Now you know why Oh, he's a, a good hog. Now you know why he's a long bow. Uh, when they were fighting, it looks I must he must have gotten chewed up pretty bad. Let's get the arrow at him. Yeah. So just pull up from this side. Yeah. He'll come right out. Use your glove. Yep. Man. It's that 
Oh, yeah. Tissue, okay. He was rolling over. All right. Oh, that went right through his lung. I don't want to think about how we're going to get this guy out of here. They're down in a ravine. Look at the sides of this. He's a good 300, 350 pounds. Going up the sides of this, that's going to be, that's going to take a little wonder, doing. You're me, packing him this time, aren't you? Well, it makes me wonder what the hog looked like that hurt him. Oh, Lord. That bothers me more than that. He's still around here somewhere. Here, I'll skin this one. Let me have oh, you one. are, huh? Yeah, I'll skin this one. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it is? There you go. If there is nothing else that I want you to learn from this video, it is that these hogs are extraordinary creatures of nature. They make for a fantastic hunt, and the rewards of taking one with a bow are many. But heed this warning. They are dangerous animals and predictably unpredictable. Use good judgment when you hunt, and if you hunt by yourself, wear a sidearm. And remember, if a hog gets you on the ground, he will win. Always use the trees to shield yourself during a charge. The animal will lose interest fast and head for the brush. As we close, I'd like to thank a few people who made this video possible. My dad, Max, and his partner, Phil Cook, Art Bergell for writing, directing, producing, and editing this video, Roy Baker for his diligent camera work in the face of the boar from hell, our camera assistants, Jim and Tom, the human Russian boar lures, and mostly, Teddy Taylor, whose new stalking techniques will revolutionize the art of boar hunting. And of course, the boars themselves, whom we are still enjoying even as you watch. And I'm Shane Jones. Until next time, I bid you safe hunting. Thank you.